Welcome back everyone to the Making a Pong course. This is Jonathan here and in this video we're going to take a look at adding sound effects to our game because right now our game is sounding well kind of bland or to be more precise it's not sounding like anything at all and that is just not how a game is played. So we've already added a bunch of sound effects. I actually found and added one more that I called Bonk just because I noticed that all of these sound effects were a little too intense for what I want to be playing when the ball bounces off a paddle or a wall. So I got this sound over here. It's on freesound.org. I will put a link to this sound in the video description so you can go and download this sound here. And this is an attribution license sound. I've already imported this into my game, so I've showed you how to do that in a previous video. Uh, if you need help, you can go back and check out that video again. But getting right onto it, uh, is, sound can be a little confusing at first, so I prepared some slides here for you. Sounds are created and added using an audio source component, which we attach onto a game object. So this lets us actually control the sound and play the sound. Now, audio sources use something called audio clips, and these are references to the actual sounds that are we are playing. So these can be sound effects or music. And just to clarify, audio clips are attached to an audio source. However, there is a way that you can play an audio clip without an audio source, uh, but that's something that uh, we may get into later. For now, I'm just going to show you the straightforward way of doing it, for which works in most cases. So. The first thing to do is consider where is it a logical place for sound to be played. Should we put sound on our walls, so on the top wall and the bottom wall, and so a sound is played whenever the ball hits them, or should we just put uh, an audio source right on the ball itself? Well, I think that makes the most sense. So I'm going to click on the ball, I'm going to click Add Component, and now I'm going to start typing in Audio Source, and I'm just going to add that component. Now this it gives us a bunch of different options here. The one that we see here that's checked by default is play on awake. Now I'm going to uncheck that. Well, actually, I'll leave it checked first just to show you. I'm going to drag my bonk sound here and attach it to this audio clip. Now, if I start the game, you're going to hear that sound right away, and that's because play on awake is checked. So that doesn't make sense. The ball has not hit a wall, so I don't want that to play. Okay, now let's go into the code for our ball script, which I already have open here. So right at the very top where we declare all our variables, I'm going to create a private audio source and call this audio source and give it a semicolon. And now under start, we can just say in the exact same way that we called our, got a reference to our body, we can say audio source equals get component type it correctly, audio source, and use the right brackets too. That would also be very helpful. Now, if we go under where we actually want uh, the sound to happen, which is when the ball hit, has a collision, it doesn't really matter if it hits a wall or it hits the paddle. All we're going to do is say, either at the top or the bottom, audio source dot play. And then we're going to do open close brackets and a semicolon. Now, if we hit save and go test this out, let's see what happens. Let's see if we get a sound. And we do. There we go. So as soon as the ball hits a wall or hits the paddle, we're getting that nice uh, bonk sound, which is what we wanted. And uh, if you'll notice, because we put that on, on collision, uh, we're not getting any sound when we hit one of the uh, colliders. So... Uh, if the computer is scoring a point or the player is scoring a point, we're not getting that sound. So having done that, I'm going to give a little bit of a challenge to you, and I'm going to see if you can figure out how to add a different sound that plays when the computer scores a point and when the player scores a point. So try to make these sure these are two different sounds, and you can make and just make sure that the sounds are not overlapping each other. So pause the video and see if you can do that on your own. And if you need help, uh, I will come back and help you with that uh, in a minute. Okay, did you give it a try? How did you do? Let me know. Uh, let's take a look at my solution here. Now, you might have gone right onto these left walls and right walls, 
and added an audio source and just followed that exact same procedure we did for the ball. And that would be an acceptable solution that without would work. But I want to show you just a, a different way you can do it because that's the easy way and that's the, that's the way that makes sense for you right now. But I'm just going to show you how to go a little bit more in depth. Uh, so I'm going to make all of the sounds play from the ball. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to create up here a public audio, oops, uh, public audio clip, and I'm going to create some different sounds, and I'm going to create bonk sound, uh, player score sound, and computer score sound. And now, if we go back into our inspector, I click on the ball. I should, it should be asking me for sounds for all these variables. So I'm going to put the bonk in here. And I'm going to, let's see, yeah, that sounds like a good sound for when the player scores. So I'm going to use this OK sound. And when the computer scores, yeah, that, that sounds depressing. So that's going to be the computer score sound. Uh, so I'm going to just drag that Wii sound into here. OK, so now I have three sounds attached to the ball. Now, if I go back into Mono Develop, uh, basically what I can do is I can change those sounds whenever I want a different one to play. So what I can do right over here, right, where we're going to play uh, the bonk sound, I'm gonna just going to say, um, I'll put this in a bracket. If audio source dot clip is not equal to bonk sound, audio source dot clip equals bonk sound. So basically I'm just telling it if the bonk sound is currently not in here, we're going to instead add the bonk sound to the clip. And we can just test that out, make sure I did that all correctly. No errors. Great. Okay. And now on trigger enter 2D where we're hitting our uh, walls, I can kind of do the opposite. So if we're increasing the player score, we're also going to want to play the uh, player score sound. So we're just going to say here uh, if, well actually we don't have to do this because if it's the last sound is most likely the player score, uh, the, the bonk sound, so we know we're going to be changing it. So we're just going to say audio source dot clip equals player score sound and now audio source dot play and we'll do the same thing under here well almost the same thing we'll be doing the computer sound this time so audio source dot clip equals computer score sound and audio source dot play okay let's test this out one final time, see if that works properly. There we go, computer scored. Oh, there's the bonk sound. And there we go, there's the player score sound. So this game just got a lot better just because it has sound. And this just goes to show the effect that making very simple changes to a game can have dramatic results on how it is overall and this is a very simple thing to do just adding sound but look how much better it is already it just feels more alive anyways i hope this all made sense to you uh, please let me know how you did let me know if you had any questions and i will see you in the next video